Hello everybody, in this video I have an unboxing, a share, a review, whatever you want to call it, and then journal with me with the Onion Skin Journal. This is an item I have been lusting after for quite some time and they often, they get announced that they're in stock and then they sell out immediately and I was finally able to get my hands on one. They're, uh, They've been, they've been able to get more stock in kind of things that don't sell out quite as fast as they used to and just, eep, I am so excited. So this arrived the other day all the way from California. Um, shipping was a little bit pricey, but just because of it's, it's coming from the USA and you know, US shipping is quite expensive. That's all there is to it. It's nothing to do with the company. That's how much it costs. Get this cute little card. Thank you so much for purchasing the Onion Skin Journal and then some social media information and that really cute little thing there. That's lovely. I'll be keeping that to journal with. So if you're unfamiliar, the Onion Skin Journal is made of, well, onion skin paper, which I'm told is very, very similar to, if you're familiar with it, old fashioned airmail paper. So it's very, very light, very, very thin, not completely translucent, but ever so slightly translucent, but can also handle an awful lot of ink and watercolour and all sorts of things being thrown at it, kind of like Tomoe River paper. I don't want to say it's exactly the same because it's absolutely not. It's a completely different thing, but that sort of thing where it's a very, very thin paper that can handle way more than ordinary paper can. Anyways, let's get into this. Um, if you haven't already seen it or if you don't know anything about it, then just do a search for Onion Skin Journal on YouTube or Instagram or something. People do the most gorgeous journaling and journal spreads and paintings and works of art and things in these. It's just, yeah, obsessed. So as you can see, beautifully packaged. I'm gonna see to what extent I can keep the packaging as is for the gram, obviously. There, the Onion Skin Journal. I think I'm just gonna, oh yeah, I'm just gonna slip it out like that. So I chose the color I forgot the name of it. Where's my phone? Okay, this is the colour Tan with Black Foil for the Onion Skin Journal, a little thing that says version one, and their little symbol of a sort of the snake eating its tail, which there is a thing on their website about why that's their logo, but I can't remember what it is. For me, it actually just reminds me of the Wheel of Time fantasy series. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Now, usually I would go for, because there's a white with uh, gold foil, and white, I really, really like things in white, and I usually go for that, but I thought, with me, I'm a messy pup. I really, really am, and if I have white things, they just get grubby and dirty so, so quickly, so I thought I would get it in the tan color, because it doesn't show the grub as much, and it is really lovely. I was a little concerned, some pictures I'd seen on Instagram and stuff, it was quite orangey looking, but it's not that at all. Like, it's almost a brown craft kind of colour. I will say I'm mildly concerned because I just checked my order here on my phone. It says an attempt was made to deliver your shipment, but it was unsuccessful. Clearly not. Anyway, let's open it. Oh, I'm so excited. So you get a little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a line guide to put behind your paper. What is this here? Timeless quality, made in America, Smithsonian, linen cover, hand folded pages, onion skin paper, an elusive paper prized by calligraphers, writers and poets. Onion skin paper has had a mystique surrounding it for this last century. Very difficult to find its unique properties, coveted by paper enthusiasts around the world for its slightly translucent, lightweight, thin quality that is deliciously durable. And then there's the Instagram and website for the Onion Skin Journal. And this is printed on a very lovely, textured paper. I put the line guide aside for now. That's on very like thick cardstock, so pretty durable. You've got this lovely parchment effect paper for your inside cover pages. And then going in, there is the onion skin. <gasps> so gorgeous. And it, it just even sounds amazing. Kind of like got that tracing paper quality to it. Just, oh. If I put the uh, little guide behind it, you can see, get an idea of how translucent it is like that with the dot grid, like that. But oh, as I said, just wanted this for so long and it feels so nice and it will like with over time, it will sort of cockle 
with age but obviously you know in a good way and just perfect for the sort of like junky vintagey journaling that so many of us love I am so looking forward to using it I'm probably going to use it alongside my junk journal just because I like having multiple journals on the go at one time I don't like staying in one thing at once but oh it's so pretty what I am going to do is a little pen test so you can see how the different inks and pens and stuff look and how they work on the paper but the journal itself it's such a beautiful quality like so professionally made it's so gorgeous and I'm really glad I got this color as I said I was concerned it was going to be a bit orangey for my taste but it is that lovely like as a comparison that's typical craft paper color if I get a better example okay that's craft paper color maybe you can see a comparison like it's got a slightly yellowish burlapy kind of tone to it the other colors there's quite a few there's as i said there's white with gold foil there's a they brought out a black one now there i think there's a sort of a dark green as well maybe i don't know I, i'll link it you can go look it's admittedly not the cheapest notebook out there but given it's made of this paper which is as as they've said hard to come by trust me it is hard to come by i really want to have some for myself to sell in my shop but i cannot find it anywhere and as i said it's beautifully really professionally made and it probably comes across as quite thin but given how thin the paper itself is i don't actually know how many pages it is actually let's see if i can find out okay it is 320 pages so yeah that's a fair amount of pages and if this this was normal paper for this size you would fit probably maybe a hundred hundred and fifty two hundred so that's why it looks so thin is as i said because of the paper the measurements by the way you probably see it's your kind of average notebook size it is uh yeah it's five and three quarters by eight and three quarters which is basically a5 on the width and half an inch taller than a5 on the height it's called the that word journal i don't know how to pronounce it and i'm not going to try uh it is as you see sold out at the current time um i signed up for alerts i think to see when it was in stock there's also the travelers onion skin journal i honestly don't know the difference between them apart from this one has like a world map embossed on the front other than that i'm not entirely sure what the difference is but yeah that's your overview that should have been enough rambling. Let's uh, do some pen tests now. I've got some of my favourite pens here to test it with. And yeah, we'll see how it does. We'll, you know, start it with the easiest ones first and go from there. If I can open this. Shall we start with the lightest colour I think I have at the moment is in this Pen. This is a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. Uh, this is the Fairy Tale Collection in Dragon Palace. It's got a medium fine nib and an ink that I can't remember it off the top of my head. I'm gonna have to look it up. We'll start off writing pen test. It's really smooth to write on. Oh my goodness, it's so smooth. It's like writing on butter. So smooth. Okay, this is a Sailor. Pro Gear Slim, Fairy Tale. You do get that lovely pen sound writing on it. I don't know how else to describe it, but if you know, you know. And if you don't know, I'm just a weirdo. Fairy Tale, Dragon Palace. And the ink, oh, it's a medium fine nib. And the ink is, I've got it written down somewhere, Diamine Matthew. And as I said, I think that's the lightest ink that I've got at the moment. It does show up, I think, slightly darker on this paper than it is, like it shows up on white. I'll give you an example on this last scrap here. I think it's slightly lighter on there. I don't know, that might just be my mind playing tricks on me. I do not know. But yeah, that's really lovely. I do need to test the, um, how quickly it dries on there. I didn't give, I... I'll test that properly in a minute. What else shall we test? Let's do this one. This is another very fine nib, so it should do fine. This is a Platinum 3776 Century in Chinonso White. 
this has a soft fine nib and again I'm gonna have to have to look up what ink is in it the ink is dum -de -dum -de -dum. oh you know what I've just remembered it's um Robert Oster summer Storm. I'm just gonna do a little squiggle and then see obviously immediately it's gonna smudge but it fountain pen ink is going to do that on almost all papers so if I do that and then just leave it for a couple of seconds and then do a smudge not as bad I know proper fountain pen reviewers will like time this but I'm not a fountain pen reviewer and I can't be asked do I can still see that's wet but it's like it's not a ridiculous amount of time it's just maybe ever so slightly longer than with normal paper um what shall we try next what have i got in here oh i've got a okay this is the sailor progress slim uh limited edition blue green nebula it has a medium nib and the ink is sailor yamadori i believe yeah i am sure it's the inks are slightly I don't know if darker is the right word, but maybe a little stronger on this paper. Like they're showing up quite like, Ur! tell you what, we haven't looked at the other side. Now, obviously you are gonna get major ghosting on this paper because it's basically, you know, it's partly translucent, but it's not bleeding in the slightest. And I know a lot of you who are not familiar with this channel are probably thinking, well, that means you can only write on one side of the page. It's gonna be a nightmare. But the way I've seen people use it, the way they've journaled in it, they make it work it's so hard to explain um hopefully when i do my journaling session you can see for yourself what other pen shall we use Okay, I got a ballpoint, I got a rollerball, I got a gel pen, I got a Posca pen, and a Stabilo Woody, which I thought we'd activate with water just to see what happens. Okay, ballpoint. I'm just gonna write if it works. There we go. Ballpoint. A little bit smudgy. Um, but I didn't exactly give it much time to dry. Then a paper. Mate, ink joy. It's a little breaky. I don't know if that's me or the pen. Hmm. It doesn't seem to be that keen on the gel pen, which is interesting. Um, let me try with another gel pen just to see. What's that? Zebra Sarasa. Oh no, it's totally fine with that. So maybe it was the paper mate, or maybe it's my pen in general. Oh, I got a Tombow. Fude What's It pen. Hmm. Yeah, it basically can cope with any pen that you throw at it. And you're going to get ghosting no matter what, because as I said, that's the nature of the paper. Right, Posca. Let's just make sure it's working. Posca paint pen that's gonna take a minute to dry oh it's actually drying quite quickly like I can actually see it drying before my eyes hmm. and finally let's use the Stabilo Woody just because I want to see how it behaves when you add some water mm, pretty oh that is really lovely <gasps> oh I like this I like this a lot all right that's going to do it for my pen test, I think. That's quite enough pen testing. So we've got various fountain pens and inks. The only one it struggled with was the Urban, um, which, as I said, it's a very, very wet ink. And it's perfectly fine. It's just a little bit uh, feathering, just a little bit. Um, the Ink Joy, the Paper Mate Ink Joy, it didn't like very much, but that could be my pen. I haven't used it in a while, but it was fine with the Zebra Sarasa. So it's fine with gel pens. Tombow, fine. Posca Paint Pen, great. The Stabilo Woody it dried really quickly. Oh my goodness, that was really quick, and you can sort of see the cockling effect you get when you add lots of water. I just think it's gorgeous, 
so beautiful. Right, okay, so let's do a little journaling session with it. Um, I'm not gonna do it right now, so you may see like a nail color change or something, just because I haven't got buckets of time at the moment, but it will be in the next second for you. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the journal with me little section of this, and oh, let's get to it. Okay, so I am a super loser, and I will be journaling about the journal in the first pages of the journal, using the little bits that came with it. I just, I just have to, I'm just so thrilled with it, as I said before, I've wanted one for so long, and yeah, there we go. So carefully peeling that little sticker off the craft packaging, and then picking some bits out from my scraps of vintage book pages and just nice papers and things to make a little collage behind that sort of bookmarky thing that came in the journal itself. The craft paper itself that it comes wrapped in, um, I'm gonna keep all of that for journaling just because it's really, really nice. Often craft paper can be quite thick, but this is quite thin, so really great for this because it's not gonna bulk it up as much. The one thing I was concerned about while doing my journaling is that I didn't know what adhesives would work best with it and I was too lazy to like Google and watch someone else's process to see what they they use. So I went with my usual um, glue stick. It's not a Pritt stick. It's the, um... oh, what are the names of the ones I use? Scotch. Scotch glue sticks. And they seem to work fine. They do, because it's a wet-ish adhesive. It does kind of cockle and wrinkle the pages a little bit, but I don't particularly mind that. So after I built that main part of the collage, I was going through my little box of little pieces and scraps. They're often things that come in my journaling kits, either the junk journal kits or the creative journal kits. I obviously I often just, I keep a little box of bits that are in that kind of thing so I can use them in my own journaling. And I saw that cute little vellum piece with the typewriter. I thought that would look nice on there. I stuck that down with red line tape. You can see the tape through it a little bit, but not to the extent that it bothers me. And then I noticed these cute little flower stickers. I was so torn about whether to use the creamy one or the pink one. I spent ages going this one or this one or this one. Couldn't decide, eventually stuck with the cream one just because I seem to have gone for a very neutral kind of tone on these pages. Then pulling out one of my favourite fountain pens to write my journaling, but I'm going to stamp the date first. The ink I'm using is Archival Ink in Sepia. Then using the line guide, I'm super happy to have that because I'm really bad at writing in a straight line on paper that doesn't have lines. Like it goes, it always goes super wonky and I never remember to like pull out a line guide. So the fact that there's one in that journal is good and reminds me to use it. I have now paper clipped it in the back of the journal so it's there ready for me to use and doesn't get lost amongst all my other things. I also wanted to journal that other, that sort of a 6 slightly smaller size card that's just like your thank you and has that cute little saying poemy thing on there. Not doing anything particularly exciting, I just used some thin grid washi to stick it down and then adding the sticker as well. Uh, but I didn't like the sticker straight on there so I've put it on some paper that's Conqueror laid paper, I think. It's a really lovely cream paper, slightly textured, that gives you that sort of vintagey feel and vibe but isn't actual vintage. It comes in my creative journal kits, that one, I think. I'm fairly sure it does. I should know my own products better, really, but meh. Yeah. Um, and then on the second page, I'm, what I mostly wanted to do with this was just sort of experiment with how it works working on the other side of the page when the paper is so much more translucent than what I'm used to working with. So yeah, it was mostly just experimenting. Um, I pulled out some bits from my massive stash of Kiki K related supplies. If you've been around on my channel for a long time, you know I used to buy Kiki K products like their paper lovers books and sticker books and everything, just as an FYI, because I get asked this. My name, Ms. Paper Lover, is nothing to do with the Kiki K Paper Lover books. I was Ms. Paper Lover before I started buying those. It's just a coincidence. Anyway, but yes, I have so many of these bits to use and I've really hoarded them and I really need to use them up. So I had that little tiny, tiny little sort of A7 size note paper that I added that's got the spots on and there was that quote that, oh, I can't read it on the screen. What does it say? Something about always being true to yourself or something like that. And I put that up with some ripped craft paper in the background. Got this cute little vellum piece here. Again, that's something from one of my creative journal kits. Then adding washi here and there, this cute little dragonfly 
sticker I did that bit of stamping it didn't stamp it stamped okay but not brilliantly I probably should have stamped it on the paper before I put it into the journal itself but you know it's fine and then I was going for a really green theme for this one I didn't go in with that plan it just sort of unfolded into that plan as I work so I'm adding some rub-ons here with nice green leafy ones and I'm going to go in and add some more green leafy stickers as well after I add my journaling as I said I was really just playing around with working on the other side of the paper seeing how you can cover things up and how it looks when you've got the writing from the other side showing through and I really like it I feel like it would annoy some people um so you know if you're that kind of person probably something to be aware of maybe it's not for you but I I really like the effect of it I can't really explain why but I don't know I just do but that's actually going to be it for the journal pages once I've put these couple of little green stickers on to carry on with the green theme fill up some empty spaces again because if you're a regular you know I'm really bad with em leaving empty spaces I'm just not good at doing it I can't do it I have to fill all of the space with stickers and fun things and pretty things but yeah quite a short journaling session I only did these two pages and that very simple thing in the front pages but I just wanted to show you using this journal and using that paper and what it's like and I had a great time I love it I love the aesthetic of it it's like this it's so hard to explain like beautiful vintagey gorgeous aestheticness I don't know I love it so much but yeah that is going to be it for this video thank you so so much for watching let me know what you think let me know what you think about the journal do you have one of these what did you use it for I would love to know and yeah relevant links of course in the description box below please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed chat to me down in the comments and I'm going thank you again bye bye